to thee we come, O Lord our God, before thine altar, Father. Thou knowest best our yearning hearts, their supplication answer. Lift up from want thy people, Lord. Bless us, O God, O Father, bless our toil. We ask thee not for bliss in life, nor golden treasure splendor, but that we enter in the strife. Christ's kingdom to engender. Lift up from sin thy people, Lord, and strengthen us. O oh, Father, bless our toil. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, I am once again so happy to join with you in these moments of prayer as our church has now entered this season of ordinary time, this season of the church, as we will continue to immerse ourselves in the life, the teachings, the miracles, the healings, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and bring those things into our own lives. Let us now join together in prayer as we say, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience and confess your sins to God. Let us now awaken in our hearts a deep sense of sorrow for the sins we've committed. With confidence in the love and mercy of God, let us confess our sins as we recite together the second form of the Confidior. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault. In my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, or fail to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. My brothers and sisters, as an act of penance for our confession today, let us pray that we will remain steadfast in faith, steadfast in our fidelity, our faith, our loyalty, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and that in fidelity to that faith, we will pattern our own lives after the life of Jesus, ones of commitment to others, ones of love for all people, ones of help and mercy and care. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May our Lord and Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy.
Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, pour out your Spirit and inflame us with the fire of your love. Grant us the words to move the hearts of all people and the courage to hold firm should your word be rejected. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the same Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who are my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance upon him. But the Lord is with me, like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response today is, Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my children, because a zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. See you, lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, in your great love, answer me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sin. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The spirit of truth will testify to me, says the Lord, and you also will testify. Alleluia, alleluia. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, as you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with the burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me, 
that I worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs on your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, I once again want to share with you a short reflection on the readings we have heard today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We live certainly in difficult and troubled times. The difficulties that we have come through and are still going through because of this time of quarantine, the difficulties that we are suffering through in our nation as the wounds of injustice, the wounds of unfair treatment are being ripped open. And so we may ask ourselves, what then is the Christian to do? We are to live in fidelity to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and know, as St. Paul reminds us, that the gift of the one man Jesus, life, salvation, love, is a gift meant for all. You see, the one thing that we find ourselves tempted to do is take shortcuts. We are tempted to find easy ways of faith, cheap grace it might be called, easy ways to say that we are followers of Jesus and not truly be changed. I oftentimes say that we have to remember that the idea of faith is not just a mental construct. We have had that opinion maybe since the Enlightenment that faith is something that occurs only in my mind. I believe in Jesus Christ, I believe in God, Father, Son, and Spirit. It was just a, a mental ascent. But maybe a much more appropriate word is to use the word loyalty. Am I loyal to Jesus in the world? Am I loyal to his example? Am I truly following him? Not just saying, yes, I believe in him, but that I'm following him in a life of love, in a life of spreading the gospel message of peace and love for all people. If we think about the life of our Lord, his miracles, his teaching, it was not just for a select few. And even when he was just teaching the disciples, he told them that these teachings I tell you speak in the light. What I say to you in darkness, we hear in the gospel today, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. That message of love and peace for all of God's creation, for all of God's people, must be proclaimed on the housetop. We cannot make shortcuts. We must live our lives loyal 
to that message. You know, it's so easy to just lock ourselves away, say that we believe, and feel justified. And yet costly grace tells us that the things we hear must be changing, should be changing our lives to reach out, to help others, to seek justice, to seek mercy, to seek love in the world for all people, to be ones who help, ones who see an injustice and speak up, to ones who see pain and bring healing, to ones to see hurt and bring love. That's what we are called in our loyalty to Jesus. So let us be those ones who seek justice, who seek mercy, who seek love, and not only seek it, but accomplish it. Matthew's Gospel tells us, everyone who acknowledges me before my, before others will be acknowledged, I will acknowledge before my Heavenly Father. To acknowledge Jesus is not just a word, it is a whole life filled with love, filled with mercy, filled with compassion. Let us be those ones who follow Jesus, not just in our mental ascent, but in our lives of loyalty to his way. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten but not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Lord listens to the needy and to us all. He is always ready with help that never fails. In confidence, we approach the Father with our prayers, seeking the compassion of the one who cherishes all creation, even the smallest sparrow. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, which through the ministers dispenses the abundant free gift of divine grace in the sacraments, and through a life of prayer, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations and the people who are enslaved by sinful systems of oppression and terror, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all men and women within the church and without, that all torment and fear within their lives may be lifted, we pray to the Lord, Lord, Hear our prayer, that in honoring the God who created all things in love, we will care for and love all people and all of creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this day of Father's Day, let us remember in our prayers our fathers and those who have been paternal figures to us, and especially let us remember our spiritual fathers who 
bishops, priests, and deacons of our holy church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this month of June, the month of sacred vocations, we pray that many men will come to the altar of God to offer the sacrifice of Christ that saves us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all that suffer any anguish, physical, mental, or spiritual, that the God who knows us fully and cherishes us will bring healing and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, that they may come into the presence of the compassionate Father, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us pray for those intentions that we each hold within our hearts. That God may answer the prayers of his precious children, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of all creation, we commit the causes uh, to you in our prayers. We praise you for your care for us and our need by giving us your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given in human hands of many, may it become for us the bread of life. The final mystery of this wine. And water may we come to share in the unity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer through the divine work of human hands. May it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in memory of the Passion, Resurrection, and Ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they, whose memory we honor on earth, intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Lord, our God, we offer this sacrifice of praise to you. May it strengthen our faith in weak and fearful moments. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through his teaching and ministry, Jesus showed us how we are to live, giving our lives in service to you and all people. Still hearing his word in our world today, we strive to follow his example and set our hearts on the world to come. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. My brothers and sisters, we now continue Holy Mass with Eucharistic prayer number three. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You have formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, who men rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Gracious God, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, prisoners freedom to the sorrowful joy to fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new and we might live no longer for ourselves but for him who died and rose for us he sent the holy spirit his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world and bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all when the hour had come for him to be glorified, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. We now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become of one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember me, your unworthy servant, my brother bishops, a bishop's elect, and all who minister in your holy church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. In a special way, remember those who are suffering the effects of this coronavirus. We remember our fathers, those who have played a paternal role in our lives. We remember our pastors, our clergy, the bishops, priests, and deacons, those who are spiritual fathers within our congregations. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them to the place of eternal joy and light and grant them and find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with our ancestors in faith, with the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who found favor with you in ages past. 
we praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence that the Father, in the words our Savior gave us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? And the bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you sent your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And my brothers and sisters, we're all joining in these moments of prayer in these difficult times. I offer you the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Let us now pray together the first communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we cannot receive communion together, let us pray the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament, in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you, Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen.
So I'm going to possess with a full heart that I'm going to take into you. And may the gift I have received be healing and strength now and forever. Similarly, good works are also public, and even those that cannot remain hidden. Let us pray. Almighty God, may your grace strengthen us, who have shared in the mysteries of the altar. Grant us the endurance to do your will, and the resolve to receive what you have promised. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Move to the depths of our very souls, Lord. We melt and homeward with grateful tears. Forwards, divine, the breaking of bread and by joyous mysteries which we did hear. For now, O oh Christ, we gain understanding of thine own purpose and judgment true. My fount of grace and water of cleansing, which with thy children thou didst imbue. For now, O Christ, we gain understanding of thine own purpose and judgment true. My fount of grace and water of cleansing, which with thy children thou didst imbue. 